Faga left the orphanage. It was difficult to live without her, though Sarah was happy for her. Sarah was stronger and healthier than all the other children. The director of the orphanage used her when she needed help, and Sarah became the most useful employee, and she was free of charge. However, when Sarah turned 15, the director told her that she had to leave the orphanage. You are too old to stay here. I have to follow the regulations, Sarah. I have no place to go. Sarah begged the director. I can't live in my sister's dorm, they won't allow it. Please, let me stay. You know that I can do any job you want. Sarah, I don't have an open position for you. I'll work for food only. Until I find a job. Please. But I can't let you sleep with other children, Sarah. I can sleep at any place. Please. Just let me stay. Sarah was given a place in a closet where she could sleep on a mattress, and she was happy. It was nicer to sleep on a bed than in a closet, but she didn't have to be on the street. Begging for food and becoming a prostitute like a lot of girls her age and in her predicament. Faga visited her siblings every Sunday, bringing them food and stories. Sarah, Aaron, and Mayer loved to listen to her. She was a very good storyteller and reminded them of their mother. Faga told them about the factory she worked at, the dorm she lived in, the people she met, and her new life. Faga worked six days a week and ten hours a day. In the evening, she spent time with the other teenagers that lived in the dorm. It was a difficult life, but at least it was fun. One day, feeling extremely happy, Faga visited her siblings. Her eyes were shining, and a smile beamed on her face. I met a guy, she said, avoiding making eye contact with her sister and brothers. Shy as she was. Really? Sarah was delighted. Tell me more. His name is David, she said gladly. He is not local. I mean, his parents live in Kharkiv. But he lives in Leningrad with his brother Lev. Oh, my God. He has a brother. Yes. Is he cute? I don't know. I never saw him. Faga giggled. Okay, okay, David. It's a good name. Yes. I dream his name. David. So, tell me more. He lives with his brother in Leningrad and is going to college there. He is going to be a shipbuilder engineer. Wow. It's so romantic. Where did you meet him? I have a co-worker, Zena. I don't like her very much because she is too bossy. But that doesn't matter she likes me. She is married and pregnant. Her husband, Joseph, has two brothers, and both of them are single. She said that one of his brothers, Lev, is dating her sister, and another one, David, doesn't have a girlfriend. So, she invited me to her house. And I came. She introduced me to David. Faga caught her breath. Go on. Don't rush me. I'm telling you the story. Okay. Okay. So, at first, he didn't even want to look at my directions. Why? You are good looking. I don't know why. It seemed like he didn't like Zena, and since I was her friend, he didn't like me by default. But then, I caught him staring at me. Oh my god. Yes. My face was burning. Faga shined. And? Sarah was insistent. And, what? Oh. Come on. Tell me everything. It happened so unexpectedly, Sarah. What? What? Did he kiss you? Yes. Faga whispered. Oh. My God. He kissed you. When? How? And then what? He walked me to my dorm. And then he kissed my lips. I got so scared that I ran away. You shouldn't. I know. But I couldn't stay. Okay. So, what happened then? Just keep talking. I hate when I have to pull the words out of your mouth. The next day, Zena told me that he liked me very much and wanted to see me again, so I agreed. Did you see him again? Not yet. I'll see him again tonight. Oh, at this rate, I'll only know all the details in a week. I can't wait that long. You have to come sooner and tell me everything. Sarah laughed. You know. I can't. Aaron and Mayer listened to their older sisters and held their breath. They had never seen them this happy. 
In a week, Faga came back to the orphanage with more stories. Sarah demanded all the details, and Faga complied with pleasure, as her younger brothers listened to every word, not blinking. Zena told me that David wanted to see me at seven, in the park. So I came. He was not there, and at first I thought that she mocked me. She was the kind of girl that could. I was not sure and was very nervous. I looked around and didn't see him coming. So, in a few minutes, as I was about to leave, suddenly, warm hands covered my eyes from behind, and David said, guess who? Oh, it's so romantic. Sarah sighed. I know. Faga giggled. Then, he said he had thought about inviting me to a movie, but then changed his mind because he had to leave in a few days. No. Yes. So, we were circling the park for a few hours, talking and kissing, no no no. Tell me all the details. Tell me about the very first kiss. I already told you the last time. Faga laughed. No. Sarah protested. That was the very first kiss. And I want to know about the first kiss after that very first kiss. Okay. As we walked in a park, he told me about his life. I kind of listened to what he was saying. But I also felt that the kiss was coming, so I couldn't concentrate on his story very much. I was trembling from the top of my head to the tip of my toes, thinking about the kiss. Oh. My God. He told me that he lived with his brother, Lev, in Leningrad. Lev worked to provide for both of them, and David studied. He said that after he graduated from college. He'd work and Lev would study. What? Sarah shouted. You'll be an old maid if you wait for both of them. No way. She concluded with disappointment. Wait. Let me tell you the whole story. Okay. So, then he said, I thought it was a good plan, until I met you. And I asked him, why? And then he stopped walking and turned to face me. He looked into my eyes, and at that point, I knew the kiss was coming. David put one hand around my shoulder and another one on the back of my head and said, Because I can't imagine living without you for this long. And then he bent down and kissed me on my lips the first time. Oh. Sarah sighed with admiration. I hope you didn't run away this time. No, I didn't, Faga giggled. It was not that hard to stay this time. Good. Did you kiss him back? Sarah jumped on her seat. Yes. I put my hands around his neck, and he pulled me closer. My heart was pounding so intensely that I was afraid that he would feel it. But then, I felt the warmth of his body. And somehow I was not nervous anymore, but I just wished that moment would last forever. I'm so happy for you, sis. Sarah sighed. Thanks. Also, do you remember I told you that his brother, Lev, dates Zena's sister? Yes. Why? She was bluffing. She wanted Lev to date her sister. But David said, it's enough to have one Zena in our family. He said that the reason he didn't want to talk to me at first was that Zena brought me in. He said that nobody liked her. So, Lev is single. That's great, but he lives too far away. Well, as mom told us, if there's a will, then there's a way. David said that Lev would come to visit his parents soon. It's a good plan. I guess. But I don't know if I want to do it. I'm already tired of waiting for letters from Samuel. Do you want me to exchange letters with one more guy? Why not? Sarah. You wanted him. No. I was just kidding. I want Samuel. I miss him. You told me that I have to regard all opportunities, but when it comes to you, you don't want to do it. All right, all right. Whatever, Sarah answered with annoyance.